I made them want to say fired up. <laughs> Certainly it's my honor and my privilege to be here. I want to thank you, Eric, for your very kind words. And to all of you, uh, if I look tired, I feel tired. It's been a long day. But I want to, first of all, thank all of you for what you're doing. The songwriters and singers, Sam and Dave, used to sing a song. I know some of you all too young to know who Sam and Dave was. But they sang a song that said, uh, you didn't have to do it, but you did. And I thank you. But I do not thank you on my behalf. I thank all of you on behalf of the many people who are often voiceless. The lady who stood at the bus stop at 5 o'clock this morning with baby in hand, waiting for the bus to come, and the bus was late. I thank you for people like my mother, who would start off today at about 5.30 in the morning, and after she had gotten breakfast fixed for her seven children, would get on the bus and go to areas of Baltimore which were much more affluent. But it was the bus that took her there. She wouldn't have been able to get there. So I thank you for people like her because in order for her to get home, she had to take the bus again. And then she had to take a bus again after she took care of her children and fixed their food to go to church. Anybody familiar? Yes. Uh -huh. And she would go to church and then she would come home on the bus. And then she would take care of her kids again, go to bed around 12 o'clock midnight and get back up at 4.30 and start all over again. I want to thank you for her. I also want to thank you for the school children who are trying simply to get an education. School kids like Chris Cajun, who's right back there, who, raise your hand, Chris, some of them may not know you, but Chris, Chris Cajun, I want to thank you for people like Chris Cajun. He and I used to ride the bus, going from one side of Baltimore to the other to get to a decent school. But if it were not for the bus, we would not have been able to get there because it was a long walk. And that's why this caucus is so important. You know, one of the things I love about what you're doing is that you're coming together. So often, people allow themselves to be divided. And in many instances, they work against each other. Hello. In other words, when I say work against, I, mean, I don't mean directly against each other, but I mean the power that they could experience if they merely came together is so much more awesome. And if you look, take a moment and look around the room, look to your left and look to your right. Look at it. Isn't this beautiful? This is the rainbow of our country. And I've often said our diversity is not our problem. Our diversity is our promise. And so, to all of you, we have come together to make a difference. But I want to remind you of something that you may not realize. This is not about you. I know you are important. I know. I know you're significant. But this is bigger than you. This is bigger than you. Because this is about the people who don't even understand how the bus system works. They don't understand iced tea. The only iced tea they know about is iced tea Lipton. They don't understand it. They don't even understand how their tax dollars should yield something back to them. There are so many people that go through life paying taxes over and over and over again and fail to do what Martin Luther King said every citizen must do. He said the number one responsibility of any citizen is to demand the full measure of their citizenship. 
too often we pay, our people pay, the people that you represent pay, but they don't get their due. And that's why I come by here to salute you, because you are the experts. You get it. You get it. Many of you all have gotten it because of your experiences. Many of you all have gotten it because of your education. Many of you all have gotten it because you began to hang around people like the people who are sitting, standing in front of you and behind you. But you understand how important this transportation issue is. If you cannot move around, if you cannot get from place to place, it affects the quality of life. And so I come by here to thank you for bringing life to life. That's what this is all about. This is, this is about bringing life to life. And I know you probably didn't even think you were all that and two bags of potato chips. But, but you always have to put what you're doing in some kind of context. The reason why I say it's bigger than you is because when I think about a Chris Cager and, and Elijah Cummings traveling from one side of Baltimore to the other, somebody had to construct a line so that we could get to school, and now Chris is very successful, I'm doing okay, but the fact is, the, the fact, no, 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 but the fact is, is that somebody had to plan for that. Somebody who did not even know our name, didn't know who we were. All they knew that there were some people that had to move from one point to another. They did not know Ruth Cummings' name. They didn't know that she could not afford a car, but she had to put 25 cents in a, in, a, in a container on a bus so that she could go and make $7 a day and car fare? That's what this is all about. It's bigger than us. People simply wanting to get, a work, get to work. Simply wanting to improve their life. Sim, sim, not trying necessarily to get to Disney World, just trying to get to the local park. Yes. Yes. Basics. And so that's what we must always stay centered on. We must, we must make sure that we leave our individual problems and issues on the side and stay focused on our objectives. Creating affordable transportation options for all people by increasing funding for public transportation, particularly in disadvantaged communities and supporting funding for pedestrian and bike facilities. Expand access. Oh, God. I have to, let me pause on that one. Oh, we have got to make sure we protect our bikers. You, many of you may not know the story, but there's an awesome young lady named Natasha who was running against Senator Mikulski. She was 30 years old. And some, and she was trying for the triathlon. Is that how you pronounce it right? And on September the 19th, she was hit by a car while she was on her bike. Now, I don't know whether there was a bike path. I don't, I don't know what was going on there. But the fact is, she's dead. We say over and over again that we want people to find other modes of transportation. We want them to get exercise. We want them to live the best life that they can. And we have got to make sure that another Natasha at 30 years old and a young lady who was absolutely brilliant. Last time I saw her, I went up to her and I said, girl, you need to be in the Democratic Party. I know you're in the Green Party, but I, I beg you to come over to the Democratic Party. But she's dead. That's why I say it's bigger than you. Expand access to places of employment and to job training sites, schools, community centers, and support the effective integration of housing and transportation centers. It simply makes sense. I have so many people in my district, and I know Eric has heard this, many of you have heard it. I have people in my district, they would get a job, but they couldn't get to the job. Chris, they couldn't get to the job. They were reaching, trying to get to the job, and maybe the first two or three days they could get a hat. Uh, I'm sorry. Hat means like a, 
Yeah, car service. I mean, I mean, I thought maybe that was just a Baltimore term. A hack. Yeah. But they were trying. One, I'll never get one young man told me, he said, Congressman, you know, man, I got this job, you know, man, this is just how I talk. He said, you know, and, uh, man, I had the job for like, you know, I mean, like, uh, I mean, I had the job for, man, three days, man, and then I mean, you know, the hack was costing me $10 a day. And I was only making about $7 an hour. So he could not get to his job. That's why it's important. That's why it's bigger than you. And if that young man had been able to get to his job, he would have been able to do for his family. It's bigger than you. Support healthy, safe, and inclusive communities, including reducing emissions, particularly from our freight movement systems. And then I could go on and on and on. There's too many people that are living in a polluted world. All you got to do is go to some of these communities and read the medical reports. Nobody ever says he died because of pollution. They said he died from lung cancer. They don't say that he died from this or that, from pollution. They say he died from something else. And what I'm saying to you is that this is about quality of life. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if we did not have you, we would have to invent you. <laughs> but there will come a day, many years from now, when other people will look back on what you did by forming this caucus and they will be so grateful to you. They will say that during his or her watch, or during their watch, they made a decision. Just like our four parents made a decision 70 some years ago to create, to create social security for people they did not even know. People 70 years ago had a vision, and not only did they have a vision, but they understood that they had to come together to create the mission, and then do the mission, and then come up with something called Social Security, and if we did not have Social Security today, our elderly would be in deep, 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 deep trouble. Yeah. And it's the same thing here. I thank you for being visionaries. You know what I thank you for too? I, I thank you. Thank you, I thank you for just putting aside, you know, I got to be president, I got to be there, I got, and just saying, you know what, you do what I do, you do what I do, you do what I do. Why ain't we coming together? What's wrong with us? We need to come together. We can affect this thing. And I'll leave you with this last little story, and then I'm finished. I gotta go. When President uh, Obama uh, first ran for, was deciding to uh, Run for president. He called me. And this is like two years before. He said, "Elijah," and we had known each other for years. He said, "Elijah, it was on a Sunday. I never forget. The Bears had just qualified to go to the Super Bowl, <laughs> and he was driving from the football game. It's true story. And he called me. He said, "Elijah," he said, uh, "I need your help." I said, "What's that?" And he was a senator then. And I said, "What's that, senator?" He says, "Well." Uh, I need you to run my campaign. I said, campaign for what? <laughs> he said, campaign for president. I said, president of what? <laughs> he said, president of the United States of America. I said, oh. <laughs> he, said, uh, he said, now I want you to run Marylanders. I want you to be head of Marylanders for Obama. So I, I said, now if you believe you can win, I'm with you. I'm going to go with him. I was very skeptical. I called 50 of my friends, 51, and, uh, and asked them to meet me, meet me at the Interprint Library downtown at six, it's at 5 o'clock on a Sunday, right after the football game. And they said, and so what happened was nobody showed up at 5.30. I was sitting there by myself. And the president told me, the senator told me, to make sure you have a tape recorder and make sure you take everything down because nobody's going to believe it when I win. That's what he told me. And I had my tape recorder because I wanted to record the whole thing. And about 6 o'clock, nobody showed up. So I took out my tape recorder, uh, put it on record, and began the meeting. 
I said, uh, we are gathered here at the Interprat Library in downtown Baltimore on the People Street. We are all gathered here and we are forming uh, Realms for Obama. And I am here to tell you that um, uh, we need to elect the president. I'm going to nominate. Let's, why don't we start this off, ladies and gentlemen? And I'm going to nominate Elijah Cutler. And I nominated myself, and I said, now, are there any other nominations? I hear silence. Nobody's speaking? Okay. We'll close the nominations if there's nobody objecting. And congratulations, Mr. Cummings. We are, you have been elected chairman. We then elected me to the secretary, spot, the treasurer, and the vice president. And that's the true story. Now, the reason why I tell you that story is that we started off with one volunteer in Maryland. In, in less than a year, we had 10,000. Why am I telling you that? The power of one person who has a vision and has commitment and who has passion, when you have that and you are on your journey trying to pursue your mission, others will join you. But you also have to have the audacity to ask people to join you. So one of the things I pray that you will do is that you will not just, you, oh God, that you do not mistake a comma for a period. Don't just be satisfied with where you are, which is 65 organizations or what have you. Get more to join you. Get more. Get more people to join. Expand your vision. Expand your mission. Because there are too many people depending upon you. And then one day, one day, 70 years from now, people look back and said, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that they cared about me before I was born. I'm so glad that they saw certain inequities in the transportation system, and I'm so glad that they saw, I'm so glad that they figured out that they were the witnesses and they needed to, to let Congress know that they were going to, even if it did not affect them directly, that they were going to stand up for people they did not know. I'm so glad. This is what they'll be saying. I'm so glad that he stood up or she stood up for me. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there's a little simple point that says I only have a minute, 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, I did not choose it, but I know that I must use it, give account if I abuse it, suffer if I lose it, only a tiny little minute. But eternity is in it. May God bless you.